All right, so I've got some examples I'm going to do graphing a cotangent function. Uh, each example will have its own video, so be sure to check them out check them all out. Uh, they'll be just kind of like maybe a normal one uh, and then you know something like cotangent of you know 3x, 5x, something like that. And then we'll have one where it's going to shift left or right and then we'll have another one where it shifts left or right and it shifts up and down. So be sure to check them out. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is look at some guidelines. So the first thing we do is find and sketch two adjacent asymptotes. So for cotangent, we know the cotangent, just regular cotangent x, is undefined at 0 and pi. And that's what the two vertical asymptotes here are. Okay. And then what we do is we divide we divide it into four equal parts. So once you get your two adjacent asymptotes, and in this case, zero and pi, so so to find the asymptotes, let me say a little bit more about that. You, you take whatever you're taking the cotangent of, you're going to set that equal to zero, and you're going to set that equal to pi. And then you'll, you'll solve for x, and you'll see that better in the, in the, in the examples that we do. And so then once you have your two adjacent asymptotes, and in this case 0 to pi, we split this, this interval here into four equal regions. So what we did is we took 0 and pi and we found the midpoint, which is pi over 2. And then we took the 0 and the pi over 2 and found the midpoint there, pi over 4. And we took the pi over 2 and the pi and found the midpoint there, 3 pi over 4. And I'm going to show you all the work on how to do this as we're working the example. And then we plot our points. So what you've got to remember with uh, cotangent is when you plot the points, that's why it's so important to get these values here. Because the first value here starts out at 1 and then it goes to 0 and then it goes to negative 1. It's going to work like that every time. No matter what these numbers are, when you find these numbers it's 1, 0, negative 1 and then we just sketch in the graph. Okay, So let's take a look at some exam at an example. Alright, so we got example 2 here, graphing cotangent function. Alright, so the first thing we need to do, if you remember from the first part of the video, is we need to find two adjacent asymptotes. And the way that we do that is whatever we're taking the cotangent of, in this case 3x plus pi over 4, we set that equal to 0, and we take the 3x plus pi over 4, and set that equal to pi. And then we solve each one of these for x, and that will give us our two adjacent vertical asymptotes. Alright, so we'll subtract pi over 4 to both sides, so that gives us 3x equals negative pi over 4. And then we will divide, I'm sorry, well you can divide by 3 or the same thing would be multiplying by a third that cancels the 3 out here and so that's going to leave me with x equals negative pi over 12 and then here we'll subtract pi over 4 to both sides so that gives me 3x is equal to was that 3 pi over 4 And then we'll multiply both sides by one-third to get rid of this 3. So that's going to be x equals pi over 4. All right. So we have got x equal negative pi over 12, and we've got x equals pi over 4. And I'm going to erase all of this. Give me some room. Let me see. Four pi. Yep. All 
All right. So now we can mark that off. We can draw our x, y. Now I can put the the y axis in here, but look, if I put it, how close does the negative pi over 12 need to be to the y axis? How close does the pi over 4 need to be there? I don't really know because they're on. I've got one on the left hand side of the y axis and one on the right hand side. So usually what I do when I have that is I just go ahead and mark these off negative pi over 12 and mark this off as pi over 4 and then I break this up into the four equal intervals and then after I do that then I sketch in where the y-axis goes you can you can get a little more accurate like that alright so let's go ahead and let's find the midpoint between these two alright so I'll show all the work so I've got negative pi over 12 plus pi over 4 which that's negative pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12 which that's going to be 2 pi over 12 which is pi over 6 okay that's what I get when I add the 2 well now I have to do what I have to half this so pi over 6 times a half is pi over 12 and so this would be pi over 12 and see now we know where the y-axis is see we're going to find the midpoint between negative pi over 12 and pi over 12 and you can see that's zero okay see if we add them together negative pi over 12 plus pi over 12 is zero half of zero is zero and so there is your y-axis okay so but that's one of the points we're looking for and remember these are our vertical asymptotes okay all right so now we need to find the midpoint between pi over 12 and 4 pi so I'm gonna do the same thing let me do it in a different color. So we've got pi over 12 plus pi over 4. That's going to be pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12. And that is going to be 4 pi over 12, which that's going to be what? Pi over 3. And then I have to take the pi over 3 and half it, and that's going to give me pi over 6. So this would be pi over 6. Alright, so now we know that cotangent starts out at 1 and then it goes to 0 and then it goes to negative 1. And since we don't have a number multiplied in front of cotangent, we know it's going to be 1, 0, negative 1. Alright, so there's here's my vertical asymptotes and here's the the critical points I've found 0 pi over 12 and pi over 6 so we know cotangent starts out at 1 and then it goes to 0 and then it goes to negative 1 and now that we have that we can let me see if I can I don't know that doesn't look very smooth but something like that you can draw it better on paper it gets kinda of slippery on the computer screen all right. So check out the other videos. I've got all the how to drive, how to graph all the trig functions. So check those out. Uh, give me a like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.